Welcome to Kentuckiana Real Talk, hosted by Jeremy Ward. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on the podcast provider of your choice and consider subscribing to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel for more expert real estate insights. Now, let's start the show. Hello, it's Jeremy Ward with Ward Realty Service, and today I have the pleasure to introduce Chase Murphy with Murphy Homes. Uh, Chase has been working with us uh, for about three years now on our brokerage, and Chase and I go way back. We pretty much started real estate at the same time. Yeah. Remember, he was a strapping young man. He's just a just an old guy now, but uh, heck, that's over been the almost hill. 20 years ago, Chase. I about 18. <laughs> it's I don't nuts. know where times went. I don't know, dude. I f- it's funny because <clears throat> I see all these early 20-year-old realtors coming in the business, and it's weird. I'm like, I talk to them like we're the same. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, do, I'm I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And they're looking at me like, dude, you're old. Get up out of my hair. <laughs> you got gray hair, man. What are you, <laughs> you, what are you talking to me for? I'm like, I'm one of the young ones, too. I'm like, my wife tells me all the time, that is sunset. You have moved on. Yeah. You know? And the gray yeah. hair, I guess, proves it. Well, you know, this business will do that to you if you're yeah. really working it. If you're working, you'll get some gray hair. And you've, you've or lose it. hair. Well, I'm doing that and got gray. <laughs> Uh, you've came a long way, Murphy. You know, we, we, I think we met early in our career and, uh, I remember the first home show you had, you know, you kicked all of our asses. I was with a very experienced builder, one of the largest ones in the area at that time. And this young guy come in, built a house and stowed the show. Yeah. Took all, there was like eight awards. I think we won them all. I think you sweep it. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I've watched you grow and you really built a lot of houses, was doing a lot of flips and. I think the next time we had a home show, I was like, surely we'll get him this time. And that was up at Champions Point. I was representing uh, Dustin Williams and Eco Homes. They built a fabulous home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Chase and his wife had really decorated the, was it the mint julep? Mint julep, yeah. Mint julep. Uh, it was just a beautiful home. What what was some of the things that stood out about that experience building that home, Chase, and just kind of how it went? Can you yeah. tell us a little more about that? <laughs> so we... Um we were really trying to get in the, what I'd call the, like the conversation as a, as a, you know, a dominant custom home builder in Southern Indiana. And don't get me wrong. We were, we were building some custom homes, but up until that point, like, I don't think we were one of the, what you would call one of the main guys. Like if you're going to, you know, call five builders and talk to them about building your dream home, I wasn't necessarily the guy you was going to call. So I made it a mission of mine, like that home show was going to be the jumping off point for me to be in that dominant conversation. And we delivered on that. I mean, we planned that house for like a year. And I think even Dustin, I was teasing with him one day, he he was asking me about my baby blue colored brick. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was teasing him. And I was colorblind, and everybody told me it was a really great color. And he was like <laughs> looking at me. Like I said, "No, I'm just teasing." And I said, "But by the way, I said, you know, no offense. I said, but we're going to win this show. Like this will be the best house. I mean, I don't really care what you do. I know you do a good job, but like, it, game's over. Right. And I know he thought that was pretty arrogant, but we felt very confident. We we spent a, to be fair, we spent a year planning that house. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> me and my wife had thought thought about like dreamed that house out as to what we would potentially build for ourselves, and even thought for a moment we might move into that one. So that house was a brainchild of what we wanted to live in, and so there was a lot of planning and a lot of time that went into that. But luckily for us, it it did spring. And there's people still. I had a customer I met with last week, and they remembered going through the the mint julep. I mean that house was branded. The barn wood that was on the ceiling was like the top three uh, barn wood c- ceiling on Pinterest in the world or wow. something crazy like that. <clears throat> I don't know if that means anything. I never got any money for that. but <laughs> Somebody probably did. Yeah, somebody did. <laughs> but still, you know, that house was just, that's probably the, to, to date, that's probably the best house we've ever done. I mean, it was it was very, very crazy. You know, as you were putting it together, we were all, you know, representing the builder. We were all there previous to the show, kind of where these things were being put together and built. And when I first looked at it, I was like, man, I don't know. It's It sits a little different than everybody yeah. else. It's, it's a different floor plan. And and then as it came together, I was really like, oh, shit, this is nice. Yeah. Like, this is really tasteful. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. the colors, the barn wood, the textures, everything you did with that house yeah. was just amazing. Well, and you won the show. Yeah. And we had a very nice house. I thought, like, I thought, man, Dustin's bringing it, you know. And these were times when, you know, your average 
kind of a luxury home was maybe three fifty, four hundred thousand. Yeah. And you guys were up to five and six hundred thousand range. Yeah. 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 So we were all a little nervous how that was gonna go in that economy. And like now it'd been no problem. Yeah. But that was before things had really, you know, taken off. Yeah, but that was a that was a cool experience, and and you know I hope we do another home show soon. Yeah, I'll be able to re- represent a guy that's going to win it this time. That's right. Maybe. That's right. <laughs> of course, Debbie will get to do that, but I'll be yeah. a part of it. Yeah, that's right. But so what's going on, Murphy? I know you're you're uh, we've kind of switched gears from building uh, on the spec side from building luxury homes to more affordable homes because yeah. let's face it, prices are up, interest is up, people are having a hard time affording homes. Yeah. So you've kind of switched gears and went to that market. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of the name of our game right now. We're everything we're building is what we're calling affordable. I mean, we're trying to build slab, you know, one level homes, not a lot of basements in terms of the specs. Now, of course, <clears throat> excuse me, on the custom side, we are doing, you know, some, some fabulous high homes. end some yes. over a million dollars right now. So, I was in Lanesville. You got one going yeah. up. It, awesome. Big house. Big house. <laughs> awesome house. But on the affordable side, I mean, we're we're one of the only guys in town that's quote unquote affordable. Mm-hmm. Um, we're offering great incentives to our in-house lender through uh, statewide mortgage. Mm-hmm. We started doing that a year ago. We was one of the first one, maybe the first, to jump out and start offering incentives. Well, that's um, something that I think with you mm-hmm. and Andrew and even myself, we've always tried to stay ahead of the yeah. head of the crowd, like yeah. looking for what's the next niche, what what's what's people need, yep, and then try to fill that need. We all are the three of us you just described, we're all somewhat obsessive in our <laughs> own general field. And, you know, uh, probably drives our wives and our employees and everybody around us crazy. But yeah. as a result, because we're so tuned in, we're typically fortunate enough to have some fortitude to be ahead of the curve. And we take a lot of pride in that, especially, I mean, I this is all I, I eat, breathe, sleep this. You sleep? Uh, yeah, barely. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. But... Um, you know, we're across the board. We're doing the affordable homes. Uh, to be frank, everything we're putting up, you guys are selling within about two to three weeks. Um, so right now, we're pretty much sold out other than some stuff we've got coming that we're going to finally start listing here in about two weeks. And I suspect we'll have them all pending quickly. It'll be gone. Um, and so, you know, with the market doing what it's doing, that's the hole that we see. A lot of these other guys are competitors. They're in ground, like they've bought pieces of land that they're just deep enough in it that they have to build more expensive homes to make any margin. Um, And the reality of it is they're going to be in some of those for a while. So we're trying to fill this kind of affordable niche. You know, there's some big guys coming into town, like some national brands coming into Southern Indiana. What's interesting is, is what I do is so niche I really don't compete against them. So I'm not really worried. In fact, in some cases, it helps us yeah. in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's just a good time to be building. I mean, and I think with the rate environment being what it's going to be, uh, you know, people have golden handcuffs is what I've kind of coined the phrase, I guess. You know, it's great that they have these three and a half percent rates that they're locked in on. However, you know, and, and they're enjoying some amazing appreciation. Right. Amazing. Uh, you know, it's a uh, probably the best investment vehicle, maybe even that they're, they've invested in. However, they can't trade out of it. You know, yeah. if they go buy another house, the rate's going to be double, and they're just going to suck all their equity out and put it in the new house that maybe isn't even as good as what they have, or not a not a true move. You know, yeah. a move up. So they're kind of locked out of the market, and as a result, there's not a lot of inventory. So us builders are having to carry the ball on that inventory. I think the builders are about 38 to 40 percent of the inventory that we yeah. do have, yeah. and we don't have. Uh, we're, we're 800 homes, uh, so you know, 40 percent of that is new construction, yeah, and it's all over the board from you know start maybe say 250 up to half a million dollars, yeah. And what I'm seeing is the 250, 300s are selling. The other ones are <clears throat> sitting around. Well, in the national, you probably know this, but the national average, there's always, the, the average has been over the last literally 20 years, there'll be 2 million homes you, worldwide, U.S., mm-hmm. 48 contiguous states on the market at all times, kind of as an average. Right now, there's a million. It's, it's like the lowest it's ever been. So what is interesting to me is everybody tries to liken this to 2008 and the fundamentals are not even not even close. Not even close. No. And and it's simple, it's so simple. It's actually very simple. It's supply and demand. That's it. And you know, everybody likes to talk about that, uh, but people a lot of times oversimplify that and then overcomplicate that. And right now you're seeing a lot of the talking heads overcomplicate it in my opinion. Yeah. And 
it's simple supply and demand. I mean, I'm living it, breathing it every day. I mean, literally everything we're putting up, we're selling. Like our townhome project, everybody told me I was crazy for building those. It would never work. And I'm like, yep, you're probably right. I'm, you know, probably won't work. I'll have to rent them out. Well, we're building them and selling them. And to be honest, we're selling them so fast. We're out of them right now. We sold our first eight, like in record time. Mm -hmm. And we're building 12 more units. I was going to only do eight. And I decided to pony up and do four more. So I'm doing 12. <laughs> nice uh, so, yeah, I've got to find some more money. Anybody that's watching that wants to donate to the poor Murphy home cause, they can. Hard sure, times for the builders. Yeah, just send us a check. <laughs> we'll take it. But. It, you know, it is a it is a challenge uh, yeah. funding it all. It is a challenge. Well, you're all up against a lot of challenges. I mean, you know, land costs are up, material costs are up, <clears throat> your rates. You know, that's the thing that gets me. And I've always, you know, the bankers, you know, these presidents of these big banks. I remember <clears throat> having a meeting with the president of First, first uh, Fifth Third. Yeah. And they come down, you know, what can we do to help you guys? And I was like, you know, to help us, you need to take it up a notch. These builders who are putting the inventory <clears throat> on the ground, Yeah. you know, there's plenty of buyers out here. What we need to do is stimulate the, the builders, yeah. help them get better loans, help them get better packages where they can get more inventory on the ground because you guys just build as much as you can, as much money as you can round up. But it's always a hit for you guys. You don't get good interest rates. Y'all get some of the worst rates. Right. You know, you're taking huge mm -hmm. risk. You're putting everything you got on the line to build these yeah. houses at these extremely high rates, which at the end of the day slows everybody down. Like, we don't need the bottom end stimulated. We need the guys that are putting inventory on the ground, some sort of help there, some yep. sort of taxes or better mm -hmm. rate or yep. something. You well, know? people don't think about it in these terms, but let's just use a simple example. Let's say five years ago, your basic, you know, 1,300 square foot home cost me $100,000 to build, not counting the land, just the house, okay? Mm -hmm. That same house today, same exact house, okay, is $160,000 to build the same house that mm -hmm. we was doing you know, four and five years ago. Well, now you take that times I've got 30 houses going. I don't know That's what that is. It's three or $4 million difference. And yeah. I'm building, I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. And the development cost has literally doubled in two years. So, you know, again, uh, <clears throat> say five years ago, if it cost, you know, all in say $10,000 to develop a lot, not counting your ground costs today, it's 22,000. Well, so for the same exact projects that we're doing that we were doing five years ago, we're we're forty to fifty percent more on, on every project on the development side. Then you add the the housing stuff in there on top of that. I mean, you're talking almost double. So if you were operating on a five million dollar budget five years ago, today it's ten. Yeah, you need to do 10. the same thing. And everybody looks at it because such a large number, and they're like, "My gosh, you know, you're you're really getting out there." But it's really not doing anything different than we were doing five years ago. Yeah, now certainly we're doing more homes than we were doing five mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, but what's funny is I'm watching the sales of the three or four larger builders, and they're half of what they were last year. Yeah. Like we're one of the only ones that are doubling or, or going you're up, growing, and growing. Um, and most of those other guys in the la last year, this year, probably next year, will be half of what they were doing prior to that. Yeah, I mean, people don't understand. It's not that you can just go snap your finger in a, in a piece of ground ready. You got years of infrastructure, uh -huh. yeah. a year just getting your infrastructure in, maybe a year planning prior to that going through planning and zoning. Like, you can't just buy a piece of ground and then that start building the next day. No. Like, you guys are on the hook yeah. for two to three years before you put the first foundation <laughs> in. And that's, that's scary. Uh, well, and then what's what's a big challenge is, and, and people need to pay attention to this when they're when they're voting. Um, you know, everybody wants to talk about affordable housing because it's a talking point, mm -hmm. okay? But there is so much government regulation, and just I see it every day. We live it, um, and I won't use the counties or the cities and the examples because they, they might watch this. They but, vary, yeah, in strictness, <laughs> right? <laughs> but the thing is, is that you got all sides of government all talking out of the sides of their mouth and they're not talking to each other. And the thing is, is every time they put another regulation on it, it costs more money and it's hurting the buyer. And it, I mean, it, it all hurts comes us, down to the bottom line. We're passing it on like everybody else does. So that is a challenge. You know, we've been able to navigate through that. We got some great inter, you know, engineering partners, mm -hmm. political, you know, uh, friends, if you will, that, that are, in Southern Indiana right now, all the different municipalities, for the most part, is pro-growth. There's one county here that starts with an F and <laughs> rhymes with uh, Lloyd, Lloyd. <laughs> uh, over here that's not so pro-growth. But, you know, even, even them, they're starting to turn loose a little bit. And, you know, the reality of it is, is Southern Indiana is, is going to grow, okay? And if you don't like the subdivisions and you don't like the growth, 
I, I do understand that argument. I mean, I grew up on a farm. My family say, yeah. is farmers. Um, but it's here. It's mm-hmm. coming. And, you know, most of the people that complain about the growth don't mind having the new dollar store right in the neighborhood or new gas stations or, or better roads better roads, or complaining that there's not enough places to eat. Mm-hmm. Well, it takes rooftops in yeah. order to support that infrastructure. So you've got to really define what you want and what you don't want. And luckily in Southern Indiana, you can still move north, east, west, um, and kind of get out of the hustle and bustle and get out of it if you want to. Yeah, and I, I mean, I was talking to the county engineer uh, here in Harrison <laughs> County, great guy, and uh, we were talking uh, uh, about the density. You know, for if people don't want homes out in the country and these big farms being turned into subdivisions, <clears throat> they need to allow us to do more density within the city and with yep. the urban areas so yep. we can kind of keep that in yep. and the rooftops supply the restaurants, yep. the Walmarts, and whatever yep. you have around. But it's been a fight, you know, no sewer, no this. You know, well, if you had the sewers in the right areas, you could get the density in those areas and that farm ground would be left alone because we need that farm ground. I get it. You yep. know, I grew up the country. I worked farms. I you know, I, I love the farm. I love hunting. I love recreation. I want that too. But I also understand people got a place to live. Yeah. And I just wish that maybe they would start, maybe start it instead of trying to help the guy that, I mean, we've got plenty of buyers. Let's help the guy at top get his cost down and then it'll show up for the guy at the right. bottom. You know? Exactly. So again, when you're voting, like, think about that. that yeah. That's a big issue. It's going to cost, you know, someday you're going to move and it's going to affect you. It you sure know? is. So, Everybody needs to be thinking about that. And so, nobody wants a nobody wants a, a subdivision in their backyard. But no. what's funny is they most of them live in a subdivision. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a, a a lady show up at a meeting against me, and and I you know we're always real professional about it. it's part of the deal. It's I expect that you're going to throw the darts, I can take them. Um, but she lived in a fairly new subdivision and was going on and on about how she didn't want the subdivision. And I said, did was your subdivision developed what maybe five or six years ago? She said, yeah, I think it was five years ago. And I said, okay, and new construction homes, right? And she goes, yeah. I said, are you the, was you the first owner of that new construction home? She goes, yeah, and I still live there. Why does this matter? I said, I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> not trying to be a jackass about it, but you know, it's like. You try hard. I, yeah, I get it. I do get it. But Clark and Floyd County and Harrison specifically, they're growing. It's coming. Oh, yeah. um, you just need to embrace it. The reality of it is, is, you know, especially like over towards Clark County. I mean, Clark County is an awesome, yeah. awesome place to live. I mean, there's restaurants, there's entertainment, there's stuff coming. There's stuff that we've just never seen. Yeah. You know, um, Floyd County, unfortunately, is behind the eight ball a little bit. I think they're trying with Georgetown, but they they, they need to step it up because we're going to get left. They're going to get left behind. You know, and I, I kind of see like. I think what's happened to them, they grew faster than their infrastructure could handle. And now they're trying to put the brakes on it to get with the infrastructure, but you need the tax basis to get the yep. infrastructure. So it's like... It's a challenge. And so I think, it, like it, you it, said, they're starting to loosen up, try to get that yep. going again. But, you know, Floyd County used to be the place that everybody escaped yep. from Wolf and went to Floyd County. Yeah. Uh, I remember my aunt, you know, they were they were executives downtown and it was a big deal. They bought their first, built their first home on Buck Creek Road in the Knobs, you know, and that, mm-hmm. that I remember that, like early 90s, everybody was going to the Knobs. Well... The knobs are full. Yeah. Like for the most part. I mean, yeah. there's still a lot of Can't farm for I mean, I live in the knobs. <clears throat> um, and to be honest, I love Floyd County. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not a native of Floyd County, but I'm a proud member, voting member of Floyd County. Um, but I'll be honest, man, it's hard to watch what's going on in Clark and not want to dip your toe over there. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm not I'm a mobile guy. I don't have to live in Floyd's knobs. I'm not mm-hmm. from there. It doesn't, you know, it's a beautiful place. I have a beautiful home. I like it out there. Uh, like my neighbors, like my community, but I could definitely live in Charlestown. I could live in Sellersburg. I could live in New Washington and be completely satisfied. Um, They're just doing a really good job out there. And Harrison County, they're coming around too. Like there's a lot of customers that we deal with that are coming out here. We're building a lot of stuff in Harrison County right now. The taxes Um, are cheap. Yeah, man. I mean, mean, it's, 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 there's a, there's just a lot of positives and that positives to be in Southern Indiana. I mean, if you're across the pond, you need to be paying attention. Well, I was doing a study. Uh, you can look up on Google where money moves. And I was saying, you know, let's look up and see who's moving to Southern Indiana. Our biggest, uh, I guess, move was coming out of Louisville. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it had to do with COVID and how that was handled. Another thing is the schools are really yep. good over here. They're yep. top of the nation. The tax breaks you get as a yep. home, you know, if you own a home, you get a homestead tax break. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's just a lot of uh, positives. When I worked at Ford, 
it was in Kentucky. I lived over here and we would compare checks and I was getting more tax breaks because I lived in Indiana driving to Kentucky. They gave me a tax break to work. So there was just a lot. So a lot of that is happening. Like you're sure. saying, they're coming over to Indiana yeah. and Harrison County is set to go. Like Lanesville exit, yeah. sewers in, things getting ready to pop. Yep. Uh, and I'm just really excited to see you guys out here building these homes because we need them. Um, so you mentioned a few of your neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. I know we've got one that's just rocking there, the townhomes in Sellersburg. If you're yep. wanting to move in Sellersburg and want something affordable, maybe it's your first home or you're looking to buy a home uh, and maybe rent it and buy another home, that would yep. be a great place. T tell them a little more about what's going on down there. So we've got some two-story townhomes in Sellersburg. They're 100% financing through rural housing available. Um, Sellersburg schools. That's okay, awesome. so everybody that's wanting in Sellersburg schools, here's your opportunity. Because again, if you do a search on the MLS for Sellersburg, you will not find hardly There's anything in, in any price range. <clears throat> the best part about all this is, I think, with the exception of one neighborhood in Jeffersonville, I think we are the lowest priced new construction in Clark County, and it just happens to be Sellersburg. So they're three bedroom, two and a half bath, two story. And I mean, we are selling these, like, I think by the end of next year, we'll be close to sold out. And I never would have dreamed that, but yeah, I, I think, think that's going to happen. Um, so, you, you know, it's one of them deals where we're building 12 more units, three of which we don't even have the foundations out of the ground, barely on the first couple, three of the next 12 are already sold. I mean, that's already awesome. gone. That tells um, you right there that it's, it's, it's a coming. Good and and deal. like we, we decided to pony up into a model home. We have a fully staged mm -hmm. model home, which is open on Saturdays and Sundays. Feel free to come out and check it out. Don't take my word for it. Come look through them. Yeah. Um, and uh, the the houses are all going to look about the same, just different colors. Our uh, decorator has went ahead and pre-picked all the colors for the next lots. So you can literally walk in there and say, hey, I like the location of this lot right here. We can open a folder and say it's going to be this color siding, this color roof, this color cabinet, this color floor. We've already got all that picked out. So literally, if you're early to the game, you can kind of pick the one that best fits your right. needs. Um, but again, probably the best part about it is it's a hundred percent financing. Well, and on top of that, you're as a builder, you're offering a buy down for the client. So we're, we're offering it's, it's now it changes daily with the yields, but just call it close to a full percent. It's, it's almost a full percent mm -hmm. off on the rate and over the life of the loan. I mean, it's like, we figured it was a couple hundred thousand dollars savings, savings over the life a of couple, the loan. Repeat that. A couple hundred thousand dollars yes. in savings yes. over the life of the loan that he's buying you for buying one of his houses. That is included with a full price offer. That's right. And, um, you know, this next group were priced at two twenty nine nine. I mean, that's we've had a couple of them already appraised for two forty five. Two forty five. I was going to say that's 20,000 under, under appraisal, appraisal value. Yeah. So you're walking in with 20 equity right there. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel strongly enough about it. My assistant that works for me, she's getting ready to go in there. My own son is going in there. Yeah. So, so you believe in him. I believe in him. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I think that neighborhood is just, it's for resale. If you, you know, the other thing is we've got the covenants and restrictions set up to where if you want to rent, rent the unit out instead of selling it when you move, you can. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a hot, a hot product. And then we've got our, uh, stuff over at Southern Commons in Charleston. Before you go to Southern Commons, how many more units will you have available? In what, Sellersburg? Yeah. How many like total uh, that we have let's left? Let's see. We're down eight. So we'll have 24. Well, three of them are sold, so I guess we got twenty-one for sale. Twenty-one more to build. That's hard to believe. Yeah, only out of 30, 32. only twenty-one available. Yeah, and we've only been out there for six months yeah. working. Yeah, yeah, it's went quick. It's went quick. Well, and I think I like about it, you know, these these are homes that uh, they uh, they're two story, they're a shared wall, so yeah. you could buy a whole building. Uh, building you could live on one side and rent the other and yep. help for it to pay this. And then you get your equity built up. You could move out and use this as a rental. And those two will pay for your next home. 100%. Pretty much. Yep. Uh, I know you do a lot of that. Like yep. you've, you've bought, I, I don't know if everybody knows, but this guy's bought a lot of houses, apartments, and duplexes in the last year, I think, to the tune of about 110 doors. 110 doors in a calendar year we've taken down. So... Uh, he does Explains a lot of the gray hair. Yeah, yeah, the gray hair. But what I guess what I'm saying is he's got his finger on the pulse of the market. Yeah, he's buying, and we're you know we're telling people it's time to buy. He's he's proof. Like he's an investor. He's a builder. Like mm -hmm. and he's still buying homes, houses, and apartments. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you know, as working with you in the past, Chase, it's been I've worked with a lot of builders, 
And it's usually with the builders, it's their way or no way. And with you, I found that you're somewhat flexible. Yeah. Whatever, not whatever it takes, but you try to work with your clients and your agents to get the job done where yeah. everybody feels good at the closing table. Yeah, yeah. And that means a lot. I've seen you take houses in on trade. I've seen you, you know, just work the deal out. Paid people, like, I bought somebody's car, you know, because yeah. they needed to get rid of the debt. And they sold it to me for what they owed on it. So there was some room for me to sell yeah. it and make a little, but it yeah. mainly got the deal done on the it house. Fixed the problem. And you know, we're, we're probably the most outside of the box of anybody you'll meet. I mean, I, I've just kind of had to, like, I've just done my whole business that way. I've had yeah. to. We have to, yeah. I mean, I came in after the recession, you know, my parents aren't rich. I mean, I don't have a, somebody that come in and wanted to co-sign, you know, millions of dollars worth of loans. I had to earn it all. Yeah. And so as a result, I've, I've gotten very creative. I mean, we're very creative. Yeah. Always thinking. Well, and you're always trying to save some money, whether it's, you know, we buying these parcels of lands and, and really that's where the developer has a chance mm -hmm. to save money is on the lot purchase. Yeah. And you're going in you're getting these properties at the right price where you can pass that savings on like 229, even though it, it appraises at two forty five. I'm at two twenty nine. You're at two twenty nine because you made a good move on the lot. Yep. And so there's a lot that goes into that. And, and you know, I, we talk about the competitors. A lot of them are out there, like you're saying, they're buying a hundred, two hundred acres, mm -hmm. and they got so much money in it, they they can't cut nobody a, a break. Well, and another thing that's that's really turning into a separator for us is we are we are doing our own development at this point in house. So all the roads, the curbs, the gutter, the sewer lines, all that stuff that you see, the land clearing, everything we're doing in, in house. And I mean, I've got a lot of friends that are excavation contractors. I like it. They're all good guys. The mm -hmm. guys that are doing all the work, Christianity, Temple, all of them. They're great guys. Yeah. I've used them on stuff. Um, however, you know, they are busy and, mm -hmm. and they're, they're running short on help and everything yeah. like the rest of us. So, we are doing our own development where we have control of it. And then we ultimately control the pricing because there's a lot of markup in that. Yeah. And now we don't have that markup. Um, we're not wanting to go out here and start a huge development company, no. but if we can just do enough <clears throat> to do our own, that's kind of where we're at. Well, you got to be affordable. You got to be affordable. And it all starts with the dirt. Yeah. And if you don't buy the dirt right and develop it right, you're screwed you're from done. day one. You're done. And, uh, you know, we are very, very astute on that in terms like that we beat that to death. Yeah. Uh, I've just figured and figured and figured, how do I get the dirt cheaper? You know, how can I make the dirt entry point cheaper so I can pass that along to the buyer? And I mean, it's it's working. What we're doing is working. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it sounds like a cheesy sales line, but we're really, you know, if we would have paid more for the dirt there at the townhomes, we would have had to been at 245. Yeah, we'd been at 245 to begin. But with. we're making a fair profit at 229.9. I mean, we're not getting rich, but we're, we're getting along. Okay. And, um, we're doing that across the board. I mean, everything we're buying, if the dirt isn't right from jump street, I don't mess with it. I let yeah. somebody else t tangle with yeah. it. And I've, I've had a couple deals in the past three years, um, that I've passed on and other guys have came behind me and, and bought and, you know, we'll see how it works out. I mean, they're in them deep and, yeah. uh, we'll see how it works out. So you've got, uh, we talked about the townhomes, you've got uh, Southern Commons out in Charlestown that's been yep. amazing. I yep. mean, my gosh, we went in there and there was Killed six it. or eight or ten homes out there that have been sold. The next thing you know, we're at there's 30, 50, 40 something, 40 something homes yeah. built now. Yeah. And you've got how many more coming up out there? Um, so we have a couple of different products out there. We've got, the, we'll start at the top and work our way backwards. We've got a what we're calling kind of a luxury patio home, small yard. Uh, it's a 1,400 square foot house, so it's it's no maintenance. Uh, they you pay an HOA fee monthly. They they mow your grass, take care of the common area landscaping, get rid of the snow in the winter, salt, do all that. Um, so it's it's a weird mix out there. We've had either you know retired folks, and that was kind of the target market. But then we've also had a lot of young like millennial type folks and people in between too. But that's been our two biggest, biggest buyers. Sellers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's hardy siding all the way around the house, solid surface floor throughout, um, granite countertops in the kitchen and both bathrooms, custom trim package, custom cabinet package, custom lighting package. They're 1,400 square feet. We're at 264.9. Everybody yeah. else, similar products, 290, yeah, 3, three. 310. They're dressed up like a three hundred thousand. They are, and we really do need to increase them. We just out there, we haven't been able to do it. And again, I'll go back to the dirt. Thank God, we've got the dirt bought right. Right. We can offer it cheaper. If we didn't, we just wouldn't even be messing with that. Right. We wouldn't it mess with work. that product. Uh, then in there, we got 
a step down in terms of size and in terms of just some of the finishes, which is which allows us to sell the house at two thirty four nine. It's a uh, 1,250, 1,300 square foot, three bed, two bath, more traditional garage in the front, mm -hmm. big backyard, patio. Patio. Um, we put up five of those and sold four of them. And like, I think I only got one left, Yeah. <laughs> you know, in two weeks or something. And then we got six more. We're getting ready to start. Uh, so total out there, we've got just lots on the ground, so to speak, another 35, 40 lots. And then I'm doing a smaller home section in there that's coming. It'll could be coming this fall. I'm, I'm excited, excited about, about that. Me too. It'll be a thousand square foot homes under two hundred thousand. And where do you find that? You ain't gonna find it. That'll be the cheapest in Clark County. That's gonna go quick. They'll be gone. Uh, yeah. We'll so, probably be pre ordering those. We'll be pre ordering those. Yeah. We'll do a model, but I don't know that we'll need a model. I think we'll <laughs> sell them so fast we won't need a model. <laughs> yeah. Model home. <laughs> Um, but I was gonna uh, say you're bringing models in. I'm kind of interested in seeing what you bring in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, they uh, uh, that's coming. So again, that neighborhood's affordable. It's rural housing. You know, 100 percent financing. Charlestown, hot, hot, hot. Um, we've and we've got some rogue lots. We've got yeah. three lots left in Scottsburg. We're getting ready to bring on that uh, in our little subdivision up there. They'll be at 189.9. I think so. We're going to price those at. They'll wow. be gone. Um, then just got some scattered lots we're cleaning up, got some downtown Jeff lots coming. Um, we're working on about six different, oh, we got the stuff in Cordon Gordon. Quarry. And we got some, some, we got what, two houses left out of the six? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we got we those two. There. We're building those. I mean, we've got, I think I said 30 earlier, I think it's actually 40 going right There's now. quite a bit. Um, so we're, we're kind of everywhere. I mean, we're doing a little everything. Chase, I appreciate you sharing all that with us. Uh, would you mind giving some of these guys out here your information who may be interested in building custom homes? Yes. Yeah. You know, we've been focusing on the specs, but I've seen several of these custom homes that he's built. Really good job. You know, he can do whatever you want. It could be a small home. It could be a huge home. Yeah. It really don't matter if you've got a plan and a lot kind of picked out. Yeah. How do they get hold of you, Chase? So murphyhomes.org, M-U-R-P-H-Y-H-O-M-E-S.org. Uh, that's our website. Um, and then, of course, on Facebook, you can find us, Murphy Homes, just type in Murphy Homes and we're going to pull right up. Um, my cell phone number is 812-595-2381. My email is uh, Chase Murphy Homes, H -A or C -H -A -S -E -M -U -R -P -H -Y -H -O -M -E -S at yahoo.com. That's pretty pretty slick yeah, here, Murph. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I'm easy to get a hold of. If you Google me, I'll pull up like the first, I think the first four or five things come up to me. Um, if you do Murphy Homes. So we're easy to get a hold of. Our office is there in Floyd's Knobs on, on Paley Pike. Got a big, two big bright LED signs. You got two there as well. Two big heads and two big signs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're easy to get a hold of. Um, we answer all the time. Our communication is really good. So we're easy Well, and you, you've got a rock star agent that works for you yeah. and represents you on your spec homes. Debbie yeah. Brown, I'm telling you, if you're interested in doing something with these spec homes or seeing anything, you need to give Debbie Brown a call. She's absolutely amazing. Yeah. You're going to have a good time when you go yeah. out and look at houses with her. She's Everybody just, loves Debbie. She is just a ball of good energy and really good people. Takes great care of her clients. Yeah. So Chase has got her. Got him a winner there, and yeah. uh, I think that's really why his business goes so good. Because yeah. Kevin Debbie, it's, yeah, it's not I'm what actually, this guy does. I'm the weakest. <laughs> out of everybody that works for me, I am becoming the weakest link. I'm actually got to figure out how to raise my stock value. I may not have a company. I'll yeah. and they'll, have it, they'll have it taken over. You'll be cleaning houses for them yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, Chase, I know you're a busy man. You, you got a ton of irons in the fire. I've been watching your phone sit over there and yeah. beep and light up, and just appreciate you coming out yeah, and, and sharing with us. And uh, again, if you're interested in building a new home, give Chase Mercy at Murphy a call. Or if you're interested in look at some spec houses that Murphy Homes has built, give Debbie a call. Uh, we appreciate you watching. For more local real estate information, please like and subscribe the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel.